So again, welcome everyone to our uh, monthly meetup. So uh, V, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure, what, what would you like to know? Um, what are you, which community are you leading? Um, do you, am where I, are you from? New? Is, it, is everybody here in this monthly meeting? Um, no, 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 no. We have like newcomers yeah. here yes, today. New yeah. Okay, so I'm a newcomer. I'm V, and I'm in uh, Canada. And I'm self employed. So I uh, help companies strategically plan, continuously improve, and develop cultures that uh, helps them destroy all their competition. And I see that community building is a big part of what I do, communities of practice in particular. So thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Aaron, do you want to uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, I don't know if my camera or microphone are working. I can't see myself, so OK. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I'm Aaron White. I am the group's program manager at Anaplan. Um, and uh, just help uh, help people with events and, and connecting and uh, talking about how to use our, our platform more strategically. And I'm based in uh, Minneapolis. Thanks, Erin. Um, April, welcome. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm April Schupel. I am the community and app market lead at Appian. And um, I... I'm vagabonding for the summer, so I'm currently work, but I'm all over the place all summer. That sounds like fun. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, it's nice yeah. after a year and a half of uh, being cooped up. It, uh, it went from one extreme to the other, you know? <laughs> yeah. I have, I have two toddlers, so sometimes I just want to run away, too. <laughs> Maybe you and April can hook up and vagabond together. <laughs> um, hi, Regina. Welcome. Do you want to yeah, introduce hi, yourself? I'm, yeah, I'm, well, I'm hiding behind the veil a bit because I'm making up a cup of tea and wandering around the house. Hey, Jessica. Um, hey, yeah, I work for Reforge, which is a startup. Um, we focus on um, tech. And not tech. Um, we're an ed tech company focusing on education for um, mid-level and senior people in tech around growth and product and all that stuff. And we just rolled out a community um, for our members. And so we're in the nascent stages of community. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, this would be a good one for me to pop. So I will unveil myself once I have my cup of tea and I'm back at my desk. <laughs> Good Thank to you, Regina. hear you. I can't wait to see you. It's been a while. Uh, Iker? Hello, everyone. Hi, uh, this is Iker. I'm joining from Istanbul, uh, the only city where two continents meet, if you like. Um, I'm one of the co-hosts of the Istanbul chapter. You know, we always, uh, you know, try and support other chapters all the time. And this is a, a community that, that this is a con concept that is very close to my heart, you know, motivation and everything. I used to manage Google communities in this region, uh, the developer communities. And now I'm a, a freelance strategist, one of the very few in Turkey. So really excited to be here. And, uh, you know, thanks for uh, putting up the show. It's fantastic. Thank you, and I'm sure we'll uh, have a lot to contribute um, after our uh, presentations. Um, okay, so I think that, so uh, Gerard, sorry if I'm not pronouncing correctly, do you want to introduce yourself? We're, yeah, we're hearing you and seeing you. So we're not hearing you very, very well. Uh, so let's... 
Let me try no, my laptop. Not yet. Not, not yet. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. My connection seems to be kind of slow. I think that just okay. slowed the whole platform down. That. that one. Everyone just froze there. Jared's a bot. Okay. You, um, so, right. So, ah, hi, Roland. So, we will start and we will go back to into, to uh, doing this uh, round of introduction uh, after the, um, the short talks. Uh, fantastic. So, we will start with Jessica Langston. Thank you for joining today. And then Katarina Pereira uh, will share uh, also um, from our systems um, their program. Okay, so just quick check. Uh, can you hear me? Can you see my slides? Great. Okay, awesome. Well, I am excited to kick this off and it was fun to put this uh, deck together um, and just kind of thinking about, you know, how do we motivate our group leaders? Sometimes you're so close to it, it's, it's almost difficult to step out of the weeds and kind of think that way. So, um, I already did some quick introductions, but a little bit more about me. I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area. That's where Salesforce is based. So it's kind of right in my neck of the woods. And um, I started at Salesforce back in 2013, working on the developer relations uh, side. And I really just kind of found my way into community. It was something that I just thought was so cool, so different. I, I My marketing background kind of just was like, uh, I kind of threw it out the window and just like full in on community and uh, I haven't looked back. Um, building our developer community and uh, there was a point where we kind of brought together, we had some siloed community programs and we brought it over into one and that's when we rebranded as the Trailblazer community. And at that point I was leading our team of community managers and I did that for several years and then around 2019 I became the director of Trailblazer community and so I feel pretty lucky it's a it's an awesome job and uh, this is a little bit more about our community and our leaders specifically so I kind of think of it in a few different buckets we have our Trailblazers online we support our online community which we just relaunched which was really exciting our new reimagined uh, community so if you want to go check that out um, we had combined with Trailhead, which is our learning platform and our community and brought that together into one experience. So it is pretty cool. We're excited about it. But on our online side, we have people that are uh, leaders that are um, helping to answer questions and just giving their knowledge back. And we also have over a thousand collaboration groups on the online community. So we have, and those are really open for anyone to start public or private. So we have a lot of those online uh, groups. And then uh, our community groups program or chapters program or however you wanna refer to it, user groups program. Uh, we have both virtual and local chapters and I'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like. We also have some amazing community conferences that we support. So we work closely with the organizers of those conferences and the planning teams to make sure that they feel supported and have what they need. And then we have our Salesforce MVP program, which is really our product experts and leaders in the community. And this is our recognition program. Um, so we host annual nominations and we award uh, MVPs on an annual basis. And that's another you know, key program that we work very closely on and uh, definitely core to our community. But today we're gonna to talk very specifically about our troubles with community groups. And um, these are all led by customers and um, completely voluntary. We have over 1300 groups at this point, which is incredible to say, uh, in 90 countries. And we have over 1800 leaders and they are meeting 300 times uh, per month. So pretty much any day of the week, there is a community group event happening. So as you can imagine, our team is quite busy um, and just a lot of lessons learned along the years of growing to this point. So hoping to kind of share some of that knowledge back here and kind of what's worked um, and some of some more tactical things that maybe you can take away for your own programs. All right, so here's a little bit more about how we motivate our leaders. So when I was thinking about this topic, I kind of was starting with 
the why, like why, why are people motivated to become a leader in the first place? And, you know, I think this is a question, you know, we're, I'm, I'm a very curious person by nature. And I think that works well as a community group leader, or I'm sorry, a community manager, because like, you're constantly trying to get feedback from your community to understand them better and to understand what they need to be successful. Um, so I just thought it would be good to kind of take that step back and understand the why first before you just go right into the tactics of how to motivate. Because um, this is something that we definitely do. I mean, on our leader application, it's one of the questions we ask is, you know, why, why do you want to become a leader? And that really helps us to understand kind of the themes that, you know, not, not everyone has the same motivators, but it's good to understand, you know, as, as a whole, like what are the motivators from your community and, and trying to see what those common themes are. Um, of course, we also host a lot of leader surveys. We do an annual leader survey to our, our group leaders, um, but we do a lot of kind of ad hoc things, just getting feedback, whether it's programs or processes or things that we want to see how we improve. We're constantly getting that feedback loop um, with our leaders. Um, and of course, we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations still, not losing that personal touch. Um, and we have a support handle too. So just having the visibility into the insights from the cases that we receive or FAQs, if you're not quite at that scale yet, um, just like what are the things people are asking for and just making sure you're keeping a close eye on kind of what, why people are starting to want to become a leader uh, with your program in the first place. Um, and so for our community, you know, it, it looks a lot like learning, connecting, um, and, and getting shared success together. So the first thing is really setting the framework for success um, and creating a space for leaders to thrive. And I think this kind of all goes around like ownership, right? I think there's pride in ownership with, with most people. And, and you know, I, it's something I talk a lot about at work is like, if we're talking about a task at hand, it's like, who's gonna own it? You, you have to have an owner, right? Um, and I think it's really important when you, uh, just from the get-go, is just setting um, some clarity around what their role is and making sure that they have everything that they need for success out, out of the gate. But I think that clarity um, was something that kind of I honed in on because I think letting them know, like if they're applying to lead a group, that they're in fact are the leader, right? And it's it's not going to be Salesforce. It's really on them. And, and that community or that local chapter really relies on their... Um, ability to keep it active and to make sure that they're meeting on a regular cadence and they really rely on that. And, um, you know, if, if a group does go inactive, it's, it's like one of the first thing we hear is from the members. Cause they're like, I want to connect. I want in like what's going on. So I think it's really important to set those expectations up front. And then, you know, as we built our program, we have so many resources, um, you know, it started very simply, but, you know, as we continued that feedback loop, they're like, we want to have content for our meetings. And so we created a content library and we want to network with other leaders. So we created opportunities to do that. But then we realized, you know, we had so many resources that it was like a little overwhelming, especially for newbies that are coming into the program. So uh, the next tip is really just onboarding, but don't overwhelm, um, especially if you have a lot of resources. Uh, we started out very simply of like, welcome to the program. Here's everything you need. And then it started to get that feedback back that they felt overwhelmed and almost defeated out of the gate, right? It's just too much too soon. So one of the things that we're currently working on is just creating more of an onboarding process and journey and not making it so like much of a, just a brain dump of here's everything that you're going to need to be a leader and good luck, right? So we're going to do a little bit more handholding and and do it in more bite-sized chunks. And this is something that we're looking at is creating like a 30-day onboarding journey that will have steps and kind of like a drip campaign in a way um, where they get bits and pieces. And so it doesn't become so over overwhelming and it's a little bit more thoughtful. So so far, uh, the feedback has been good. We're still working on rolling this out. So I'll definitely give you updates along the way on how this is going, but something really excited about, and actually some of the leaders that we had just shared this with are like, oh, I wanna go back and do my onboarding all over again. So um, hopefully it's a step in the right direction. 
And then never lose that personal touch. Um, as you can imagine, growing to the scale of over 1,800 liters, that's incredibly difficult to do at scale. Um, but it's so, so important. And I think it really helps people feel connected to our team, to Salesforce, to feel supported, to feel like they have that gateway where they can come and give feedback and just share, you know, what challenges they might be having. So some of the ways that plays out for us to check in with our leaders is we have regular office hours. Um, we definitely do one-to-one -one coaching conversations. We leverage tools like Calendly so that we can kind of keep our calendars open and accessible. And I still share my calendar out, even though I'm a director. I mean, part of my job that I absolutely love is still just having a chance to talk to our trailblazers. So um, definitely just making sure we keep our, you know, that, that personal touch. We have virtual coffees. Um, we offer mentorship. So sometimes like we can't always scale our team to the size of our community too. So often we rely on some of our more tenured uh, group leaders to help do that work too. So um, there's mentorship opportunities and that really helps some of the people that are newer um, to get feedback. And in some ways that could be even more effective because they're hearing it from up here. And then we started doing an advisory board. Um, I think that was back in 2019. Um, we just relaunched a new advisory board. Uh, so we're going to keep it going because it's been pretty successful. And this is uh, another way for us to really touch base with, you know, volunteers. They all raise their hand. They want to be a part of it. And this is another opportunity for them to get feedback and really shape the program from that feedback. So we look at it as a co-design and this really helps them feel engaged and that their voice is heard um, and that they really feel like they, they have a say in where the program goes. And it really is the feedback from the community that helps to shape our roadmap. So um, that's just not lip service. It is something that we definitely practice. And uh, here's here's another topic that you know is near to dear to my heart is kind of creating a reason to host an event. Um, we started to kind of pilot some some different ways to do this and kind of sharing kind of our, our more successful um, launches, which is creating these halo events and event in the boxes. So we really kind of centered around like, what are the reasons why our community may want to get together? And um, often it can be, uh, for us, it, it could be our biggest conferences, like we host Dreamforce every year, we have Trailhead DX, which is our uh, developer and admin conference. Um, and so those are like fantastic opportunities. I mean, people are already engaged and they want to be a part of it or they're attending in person, hopefully one day again. And um, these are really fantastic ways to get your community engaged. So we started to do this, uh, I think it was back in 2018, it was with the first Trailhead DX. I remember we started to doing viewing parties um, and it was just an opportunity for them to get together, to kind of watch the keynote together, have a celebration. Um, and it was great, but at the same time, they wanted more. They wanted some, they really wanted to get the content. They wanted to learn together. So uh, we wanted to package that up and that was kind of, um, what is now Global Gatherings, which is where we put all the best content from our in-person conferences into a box, um, essentially a box, virtual box, um, and try to package that up in a way that's really friendly for a group meeting, whether it's presentations, having speaker notes, maybe having demos that are scripted out, um, and just making it super simple for them to take all that good learning from the conferences and take it to their communities. And really it extends those events in a way and it gives access to so many more of our customers that we ever would at a conference because there's a limit to how many tickets you can have. And with community, you know, it really um, helps us to extend all the work that we do and put into a conference and all that amazing content that you know our content producers put together, it's like, why not just turn that over to the community and let them kind of run with it? And so that's been fantastic and super successful. Um, of course, you know, right now it's a little bit difficult with everything being virtual. So we we did pivot this year and we we were also getting a lot of feedback from our community group leaders that part of the challenge and why they weren't necessarily hosting a meeting was because they were strapped for time because because of COVID and everything else going on in their lives that they were just, you know, that this was something that was slipping. And um, so we did some watch parties this year and we piloted it with our world tour events and we did it 
again with our, our marketing connections event. Um, and then we did the big one with Trailhead DX, which was just, uh, I guess, two weeks ago. I can't remember anymore. Um, and it was fantastic. It was just a little bit more simplified. It was just like, hey, just host a watch party, get together, have some fun. We sent out some some kits with like little watch party kits and some shirts just to kind of extend that celebration out to our community. And it was really fun. Um, and I'll, I'll share the results of that on the next slide. We've also done with Dev Week, Pro Bono Week, working closely with our .org uh, side of the house. And then when we did rollouts like Lightning, we did something with the Lightning Tour, which Regina probably remembers because that was when she was at Salesforce, uh, where it's just like, looking for those opportunities that your community is already kind of excited about and then creating something that gives them an opportunity to meet. So hopefully that makes sense. So here's a little bit more on Trailhead DX watch parties, which was um, just, like I said, it was just very recent. And we actually had over 200 groups participate in 36 countries. And we had over 6,500 attendees um, at those events. So it was really, really popular. Here's some of the tweets and people kind of sharing their swag kits they were super excited about. They were taking screenshots and sharing on social. It was just a lot of fun. And for some of the, and we saw a huge spike, by the way, in, in meetings from this event. And um, so it was really fantastic and just nice to see that there was still that response and people were motivated to continue to meet. But sometimes you just got to give them a reason to do so. And then another really important one is peer-to-peer -peer inspiration. So we just find that a lot of our leaders really want to network with other leaders. And so we really try to do this whenever we can. Um, this picture is from Dreamforce 2019, where we host an annual kind of group leader um, meetup. And this was like one of the biggest ones that we had. And I mean, it was just incredible to see that many people in a room. I miss having people in a room together. It was great. Um, but this is where we kind of celebrate them and we'll give updates on the program. We'll talk about, you know, the program as a whole and how they fit into it. And then also making sure that we're sharing successes. You'll see on the right picture there, that was a panel that we hosted with some of our group leaders, just giving them an opportunity to talk about how they lead their groups. And we did some really fantastic networking circles at that event too, where we, we split them out by either the type of group that they ran or maybe what region they were in, whether they were like a 10 year plus veteran or they had just started a group and just giving them a chance to meet with kind of their people. And of course, we also love to just celebrate our leaders. I mean, I can't stated enough, what they do is so amazing. The fact that they volunteer to help, you know, start these local chapters and help other people learn and connect and really succeed at Salesforce is just mind blowing. Um, so we always try to bring the fun and the inspiration back into our community and really celebrate our leaders. So um, as an example here, this is when we celebrated over a thousand community groups. We put on like a big virtual party and we just had a lot of fun just celebrating them. So just encouraging you to bring the fun and celebrate milestones, award great leader characteristics, share success stories. That's something that like we do often where we highlight and spotlight our trailblazers. Um, keep those personal touches and also keep that attitude of gratitude because, you know, what they do is so amazing and just continuing to thank them, um, it goes a long way. And I think that's my last slide. I wanted to keep it a little bit concise um, so we have time for the next presentation, but definitely will be open for questions and conversation uh, after. Wow, Jessica, thank you. I, it was like very packed well, but so many ideas and um, um, an experience, I think, that you shared in that in, in the last, like, uh, then I didn't get, keep track of time minutes. So thank you very much. Um, so I um, forgot to say that if you have questions with Jessica, you can drop them on the uh, Q&A chat because I know I have questions. Uh, but let's go to Katerina Ferreira. And then we will do a, a long Q and A. And hi, Eli, who joined us, my co-host. Um, he will be joining with his camera, I hope. So, Katrina. So, hi, everyone. It's really nice to be here. Uh, Jessica, it was an amazing presentation. Really excited to hear it. Can let me just share my screen. And 
I'm hoping you can see it. Yes, we're seeing that. Fantastic. Perfect. So I'm Katerina Pereira. I'm a community events manager at OutSystems. So I started my journey with community close to two years ago. So before that, I was doing uh, design and I was already in the events world, but not specifically within the, the community. So I was doing weddings, completely different. Um, and then, yeah, so close to two years ago, I joined Out Systems and embraced the challenge of creating these events specifically, specifically for our own community. So in terms of our user group, so we are a bit... Well, we don't have as many groups as Salesforce, but we have a really strong community. So we have close to 65 groups and we are in 33 countries. So obviously we, we want to grow, we want to, to bring as many developers as we can to, to our events as well. And right now we have around 100 leaders. So one of the things that we, we do on a daily basis is try to motivate our leaders and making them feel like they are in a safe place and that they can improve and, and grow. So this is how we do it. So it's all about the leaders. So one of the things we've seen is that we need to know them. So we have a few community managers spread around the regions, but it's really important for us to also have a close re relationship with them, to know them, to, to making sure that they know us, that they know that we are in a safe place, that they can reach out to us, that they can, I don't know, bond with us. And, and whenever they need, they can always come to us. Another thing we, we find really important, and we have had a, a few examples in the past, is to set expectations. So they are building communities. It's something that they are not used to doing. So it's really important for us to tell them that a community is not grown from day to night and that it takes time and that sometimes their events might have fewer people, but we will get there. So it's not about the amount of people, but the, the quality of the, of the event and of the people and of the, of the sharing that make the, the events. The other thing we, we always do is we listen. So we find really important and it's completely like central for them to feel motivated to, to, for them to feel listened to. So we always find space for them to give us feedback, for, for us to be available to chat with them, to sit down, to, to share concerns and create a better event and a better community from that. And lastly, it's a matter of just taking all of that and improve. Improve from our end as well, because we are not perfect. We don't do perfect events. We are not perfect community managers. And it's just a matter of taking all the feedback from the leaders and improve. And then also, obviously, because everyone loves special incentives. So this is something we, we always have. And actually, part of this we only started doing a few months ago. So we created Slack workspace, so a private communication channel for them to, to connect, for them to talk with each other, for them to discuss um, topics, to discuss how to run events, the best networking tools, um, and all of that. So we want them to bond with each other, and it will also help us to take a step back and let the other leaders uh, take the, the opportunity to, to learn from each other. Something we also created was a shared drive. So we have shareable resources from presentations to documents, best practices, all the stuff they need to thrive. So if they are doing, uh, so our events are usually technical presentations. So if they are doing an event regarding a special um, feature, they can just go there and they don't need to create an event from scratch because they already have their presentations. They can just adapt. And then one of the things that we are working on is on the rewards. So we are creating, we usually, we have 
not a, a standard swag kit that we send to community members, but we are creating, we are in the process of creating a special swag kit just for them. So like a hoodie or t-shirts or things for them to wear at the events. It's swag kits, I swear, it's one of the things they asks us most. So whenever we have a new jacket or new hoodie, they are always like, oh, when can we have that? So we want to create that for them as well. And we have community profiles. So we want to also add special badges. We want to for them to also have that recognition within their community profiles. And then lastly, another thing that we are in the process of creating is just workshops. So they, again, they are not from the events world. They are not used to doing community. So we want them to have all the resources they can to, to make the most out of it. So we are in the process of creating workshops, like how to pitch on an event or how to host an event, how to run an event, all of that. Um, and as well, we are doing some mentoring sessions. So we are taking advantage of the older senior members we have at the at amongst the leaders and we are pairing them with junior so this will help them as jessica was mentioned it's peer to peer it's really important for them to learn and as we grow uh, we won't be able to to manage all of them at the same time although we want to have a close look uh, but the mentoring sessions will help And then just a few tips and tricks that we have. So they are not foolproof, but they work for our community. So one of the things we always do is just be optimistic and be cheerful. It's, it's we always, whenever we have, whether it's planning calls or just coffee or right before the event starts, if we are attending like an online event, we always try to be optimistic, to, to be cheerful, to give them, to set the right mood. And whenever we do this, we see that they even themselves get happier, they get more relaxed. And then it's about empowering the leaders. So as I was mentioning, we have a set of resources and we do a lot, of, we, we are with them every step of the way. So it's just a matter of empowering them, giving them all the tools they need to succeed. And lastly, it's about reassuring them so they are leaders for a reason, right? So they know what they are doing. They know about whatever they're going to, to talk about at the event. They know, they know pretty much everything. So it's just a matter of starting, right? Even if they are beginners, if they've never done an event before, it's important for them to know that we are here and that we are here with them to help them every step of the way. And then... After the event, what we always try to do is just to praise them. Just take a minute to send them an email, to send them a message and congratulate them on the event. Just say, hey, it was a good event. I'm so happy that you were able to do that and all of that. But it's not just about praising them. It's about giving them constructive feedback as well. So no one's perfect. We are always learning. And it's really important for us to give them the feedback but to give them in the right way. It's just not about giving bad feedback, but making sure that they know that it's okay and that they can improve in the next one. And this was me. So it was a really short presentation, uh, but I hope it helped. And thank you so much. Thank you very much. Short and to the point. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, fantastic. So I see we have some people joining us. Welcome, everyone. So we can start um, the Q&A. Do you have questions for Jessica? So Erin, I saw you had a question, but it just disappeared from the... That was my fault, 100%. I'll take ownership. I went to answer it live. I don't know. That was the wrong thing to choose. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that option is. Um, was that question for me? I could definitely try that. Um, yeah, so Erin, um, do you want to ask your question? If you can um, unmute yourself. Yeah, sorry, uh, I uh, ran off to go make some lunch. <laughs> um, my question was just, I, I love everything you guys are, are doing at Salesforce. We've patterned a lot of things after uh, some of the things we've seen you doing, which is just awesome. Thank you for being so willing to share it. But our 
our initial issue is really converting from some of our original internal leaders to external leaders and getting them to, to come in the door and go through the onboarding process and start getting that, that wheel going. Um, any advice for getting over that initial hurdle? Yeah, I, I think we were kind of like our best kept secret for a while. Like we just did not a good do a good job of making it discoverable of, hey, you can start a group and, and make it just super easy to find. And I think sometimes that is a hurdle because that requires alignment from, you know, all sorts of people within the business to, you know, get that listed and to get marketing support to do that. So I will say getting marketing support was a huge way for us to get over that hurdle because it helped us to like brand everything, gel it, bring it together, make it clear, concise, and easy to find. Um, it used to be kind of like word of mouth and like you would email me when Regina came in. I remember it was, it was like to our personal email. There was no support handle. <laughs> so um, I think just getting through some of those hurdles uh, in the beginning, really, that's when we started to see it kind of bloom and kind of explode to where the point it is now. Um, but, you know, on, on the flip side of that, too, is, uh, you know, you get a lot of people that maybe don't know what the expectation is of a leader. Or they stumble on it. Like, that, that sounds cool. I'm going to sign up. And there's a lot of work with being a group leader, too. So that's kind of why I went into that setting that expectation up front is something that we're trying to do, too, because otherwise you see a lot of that drop off where people apply and then never host their first meeting. And that's definitely a challenge, too. So that's where we're kind of working through creating some pre-application steps, making sure the expectation is clear up front, what that means, and kind of that clarity of what the role is. Um, and we, we used to have some internal folks that would you know, try to step up as leaders, and we really had to just kind of draw the line of like, no, that's not gonna happen. They can still all obviously play a role, and they could help to motivate and champion and do that and then be involved. They could speak at events. They can help to find and mentor new leaders. And that helps to extend our team's reach. And I love that. So it's like also kind of walking that fine line of not demotivating those internal champions. Like, hey, we're, we're so happy that you're so excited about community, but we don't want to like overstep too. Like we're Salesforce and we really want this to be community. And, and just kind of drawing that line was important for us as well. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, thank I got you, a Scott. question. It's a little off to the side for Jessica, but uh, I'm really curious too. I'd love to know what your children are building in the next room. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about uh, the construction just, noise. Yeah, my father-in-law is just knocking down walls. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> With the kids. Okay, I'm teasing. Best timing, yeah. Uh, I got a comment on the, someone put in there for a digital, digital swag. I don't know. I just made a connection with the, the non-fungible tokens. Does anyone not know what a non-fungible token is? I have one. I just bought. You just bought one. So I'm thinking of non-fungible tokens as maybe some, some kind of digital swag. I don't know how you make them. I don't know where they come from. But, uh, you know, if you do it now, they could be worth uh, significant amounts of money uh into like you know 10 years from now 20 years from now non-fungible tokens that were from 2021 for group leaders anyway there's an idea. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good investment it we've might been be. doing a lot of cert vouchers because you know certification or being a certified salesforce admin or you know d developer is really a popular thing and uh so we've been doing cert vouchers and that is pretty cool because it really invests in their learning too. Um, so I love that as a digital swag. And I think we were actually exploring doing some like printouts at home for like the little lollipops that we had sent out just to be a little more sustainable. Um, that was feedback that we got. So I think that's uh, might be a fun way to do it too. For those so crafters at home. Jessica, you said that uh, the leaders are volunteers. How about Kat? Uh, are the, are the are the leaders of the communities? Are they are they? Do you pay them, or are they just no? They're never paid. So I'm new to this community thing. So I'll have the stupid questions. It's not the stupid. There's it, there aren't the stupid questions. Oh, I can think exactly. Of some, I think. <laughs> not today. Um, 
But there are, I have to say that I, I don't remember who was it, but uh, first of all, Aaron, for example, their community leaders are, uh, were in the past uh, employees of the company and they're shifting to, to be with volunteers that are um, not employees. I think this is why we're doing this talk today because people that are actually doing a lot of work for your company and they're not paid, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to motivate them. Is there some thinking around, uh, or is it happening in the, in different communities where uh, those leaders are, are getting some kind of kickback or cut of subscription? Or I mean, to me, it sounds like communities community building can be can be a, another revenue stream. stream you're built. Itself. It's definitely an expense. So when you're a community leader, you're usually doing that for, for specific reasons. Uh, from my experience, it's uh, building your personal brand as experts on something or on, on the uh, relevant topic of the uh, community you're building. It's you want to contribute to the community because it's contributed a lot to you. I did see some cases um, or you usually want to really um, like help your educator, for example. You are selling, you are teaching, you are doing courses. So again, it's in the end, it's like coming back to you because it's kind of a marketing. But if you are doing that authentic, authentically, so it's it's good for the community. You're really building a community. It's also getting back at you uh, from um, um, getting uh, jobs and uh, and uh, teaching. Um, uh, right, you're spreading your name. So it's. In the end, usually it should pay off. And if, and if not, they don't. They don't really. They stop volunteering. They don't do their um, uh, meetups. Somebody want to add to that? Yeah, um, I can. Eli knows firsthand. Jessica knows. I mean, you know how I got into Salesforce. It was through the community that Eli manages, um, and I've been doing that for free for over a decade. Um, and I do it because I had a personal motivation to do it. And that kept me, and it still keeps me motivated. I'm still organizing that group. It fell off a bit during the pandemic, um, you know, and, and that's opened doors, you know, professionally, um, but also mostly personally. I really am highly vested in the mission of the community that I manage. Um, and so, yeah, I'll stop there. And I do have a question also, so just <laughs> that I put in the Q&A sec. Yeah, I mean, just to add on, I, I think, you know, there's, I would be cautious, of course, with, yeah, you wouldn't want to ever, I think, put any financial gain from community. I think that would just create the wrong motivation from the get-go. Um, but from our end, you know, we see, yeah, it is a lot of personal people want to connect uh, to help solution together. They want to, you know, I think a lot of people learn best by teaching too. And so there's that component. Um, they do want to build a network and networks are so important, you know, whether they're an admin on Salesforce and they want to connect with other admins so that they can succeed in their career and their career path and build that network. I mean, it, it is, um, there's so much good that comes out of it. And then also it's it's a lot of fun too. I think people have a lot of fun with it and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you can't put a price tag on it, but I mean, it just makes it incredibly, uh, you know, I think something that people wanna be a part of and um, it helps build that connection. I'd be curious to hear what other people think on that. It's pretty much similar on our community adult system. So one of the most one of the things we usually ask them why they want to be user group leaders, uh, their answer is always we want to give back to the community. So they really want to give back. So they've learned with the community. They've learned through getting networking with other people. So it's a matter of just giving back as well. And another thing that we've seen is that they have upon entering the program, they have a direct line with the OutSystems community. So whenever they need something, if they have questions, if they, they have any concern, they can always reach out to us and we'll help them, even if it doesn't have to do with user groups. So it's just a direct line to the to OutSystems in our case. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Eli in Vancouver here. And yeah, I think what I'm hearing from Tali, what I'm hearing from Vera in the chat is, is bang on about my experience. Um, most of my time in my orientation interview is it's less about 
overviewing the program, but really trying to get deep into the the motivation for that particular volunteer. Um, and I've got like some core personas, like is this the person who's a consultant trying to build their network? Is this the person looking for a social outlet? Um, and going deep into the the why does someone want to get involved as a leader, that allows you to really like, you know, basically complete the sales job and and get them to structure their particular chapter in the right way that it meets their needs. Because because I want someone in that role three years from now. That's my goal. Um, if they just do two events and disappear, well, what a waste of my time and my community's time. So so that to me is always like the key thing, which is like, if we can get that right alignment, that value proposition, which is almost always not money, um, but instead like what Vera is talking about, those intrinsic motivations. But once we get that alignment in place, it almost always falls pretty easily out of there. Thank you, Eli. Um, Regina, do you want to ask your question? Sure. Yeah, actually, um, for me, like I said, Reforge, we are, our, our community is quite nascent right now, but I'm seeing it already. I'm seeing people move and send us messages. Oh, we want to, I, and I'm like literally just a message popped up in the member Slack where they're going to meet up in Mexico City with or without us, right? So the momentum is already starting, right? You got another message from someone in Singapore. Oh, I want to do this. Um, you know, so it's more around the issue of frameworks. And I'm happy that I've got a little bit of exposure to Salesforce and have, you know, this experience with the tech soup, um, community too. I've got a little bit, you know, of a some basics, but frameworks, um, what are your thoughts from OutSystems and Salesforce and anyone else um, who want to add? And hi, OutSystems team, by the way, I good to see you guys. <laughs> Hi, Regina. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> I feel you are everywhere right now, Regina. So every event that I attend online, you are there. <laughs> that must mean something. Reforge is 100% remote, so I'm online all the time now. Jessica, uh, Katerina, you want to address the... Yeah, I'm sorry. I was I was reading while I was answering. Um, so the question is, oh, so you're using Mobilize right now? Is that correct? And high level tips on establishing a framework that would be great. Yeah. So it's more of like our developers are building everything. We actually don't use Mobilize. Okay. I'm just meaning they were mobilized. They're starting to uh, mobilize. To, um, sorry, I was thinking of the yeah. product Mobilize. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mobilize. I <laughs> at Salesforce, but um, that maybe no more. Um, so yeah, it's just an issue of setting the kind of the groundwork for spinning these up with some sort of structure because it could go off the rails really quick. Um, and I know it's going to change no matter what, because that's what communities do. Yeah, I mean, that's a great point. And um, we didn't always have, you know, like I said, we started kind of from inbox and we built out quite a bit to get to the scale that we're at. I, I think that the quick wins for me are um, having a support handle is awesome. You know, just being able to track all of the questions. It's more about the insights, right? It's not so much like it's the same thing. It's an email exchange, but like having the ability to kind of track what are the top case drivers and, and then that kind of helps us solution in a lot of ways what else we want to scale. Um, and that kind of is like, can can we automate? Can we build? Can we buy? Kind of just like balancing out. And I think that's like obviously a, a choice you have to make. And we're constantly, I think, still in a team of trade offs. Like, you know, we're we're we have so such a large community. So it's like sometimes we're paying attention to this program, and maybe we're going to put this one on the back burner because it's okay. It's kind of that MV. We're still in that MVP, like always test and and build. Um, mentality. I don't think that'll ever change. And, you know, coming from a dev relations team, I, I love that kind of agile mindset. Um, and it just kind of gives us the flexibility. So I think um, having that support piece was key and, and really did help. Um, and then from there, I mean, we do obviously a lot on Salesforce. So I think having just a customer relations management tool is really awesome and helpful. Um, 
you know, whatever you do use, uh, I, I think just being able to kind of keep track of everything because it's not good to have it live all up here. You know, that's kind of kind of that like you, you never want to feel like you can't step away from the community because then like all of that knowledge is lost. And I, I, I think that's been a huge kind of learning lesson, you know, even with when I went on maternity leave for the first time and Regina stepped in, it was like, I think we had a day overlap to be like, here is everything. Bye. You know, and that didn't feel right or good. And you want to make sure that you kind of maintain the health of the community. So just like having a, a place to track things, keep your notes, um, that that's super important. Um, and then, you know, onboarding and offboarding is such a, a large um, effort and it's just like ongoing. So I think if you can kind of focus on like, how do you streamline automate that piece um, through automation is really fantastic. Yeah, thanks for that. I'm just, I'm glad we have quite a robust and supportive engineering team. We work really closely with them. So thanks yeah. so much, I appreciate this. Yeah, I'll let you know if anything else pops to my mind. That's what's top of mind now. Um, thank you, Regina. And we can do uh, an event about how to start chapter programs. I don't know if we've done yet. So it's, uh, <laughs> thank you for the idea and we will invite you. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for resources to so, start, get going and develop and lessons learned uh, from people who have been in it for a long time doing this. And I got one other question for you take off there, just about the data collection. Uh, Jessica was mentioning you know, what other what other ways are you you uh, collecting data from communities? What comes to mind for me is online community is is I think a huge way to just get insights about what are people talking about topics. I mean that's kind of the biggest at scale uh, way to measure that. Um, so we look at, you know, how engaged are people? Engagement metrics are key to me because I, I think really is like how healthy is the community? It's kind of that quality versus quantity. Um, you always want, it, it's much better to grow at a slow pace and make sure it's, it's you know, vibrant, engaged, and people are really getting a lot out of that connection. Um, when it comes to community groups, of course, we look at, you uh, growth, you know, but that's not the most important thing. I think we we started to measure CSAT of the meetings. Like, so we actually um, will survey the members to understand what their experience is. And I think that's a really key um, measure too, because it helps us to be a little bit more proactive rather than dealing with a complaint that might come up. It's like, maybe we're seeing um, something that, you know, maybe there's some low, low scores that we found from a, a recent meeting and we could look into that and see what's going on and maybe reach out to the leader and have a conversation. So I think um, that's another great one. It's just kind of always keeping your eye on the customer experience still and not losing that, you know, because this is an extension of your brand and, and you want to make sure that people are having a good experience, whether it's a community event or not. And so that's kind of where those coaching conversations come in. Yeah, we, I can also talk about at our, what we do at our systems, but yeah, we use pretty much the same metrics as Jessica mentioned. Uh, we do track the number of, in this case, for only the, the events. So we do track like the number of people that are RSVP, and then we compare to the actual number of people that attended the events. So we can know like what's the difference between both of them and how we can for the next time get more members to not only RSVP, but to actually come to the event. Uh, another one that we try to do, but it's a bit trickier, is the, the drop rate. So we try to see like how long people stayed at the event and where they dropped off to understand if it was a, on a session, if it was during a break, or what can we do to, to improve that. So we do also um, check, and this is, a bit different but we do it's not an okr but it's something that we try to keep on as well as a, a target for us it's the number of local events we do each each quarter and then also the number of leaders we we add but it's that's pretty much it and then the survey as well because it's really important for us to get the answers and to also share the answers with the leaders like what would you like to hear about on the next user group or something like that? It's super valuable for them. Great, thanks. 
Thank you. Um, so if you want to stay, okay, I'm here, I'm not leaving because like our um, hour uh, is getting to the end, but we if we can stay because I think it's uh, an interesting conversation. Um, Iker, you had an, a question on the chat. Do you want to ask it? Uh, yes, um, uh, I think Jessica's already replied uh, mm. uh, with, with, with a quote. Okay. And, uh, I, I want to that. answer this more. <laughs> oh, yeah, fantastic. No, it's, that, that, that's been great. So basically, um, you know, uh, Salesforce is 99 and obviously Google's 98. I can't believe I'm old enough to remember all this. So uh, basically, um, uh, I understand that the Trailblazer community as a community only launched uh, in 2007. So that's what the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the history says. So basically, um, just like many companies and many products, and uh, when I mentioned Google specifically, you know, um, uh, they all started around the product. So basically, the community came a little bit after, which is a little bit of a contrast in what we're seeing today. Just like you know, figmas and the notions, they all you know they're born with a, with a community, or you know they're like proper community-led companies. So, uh, Jessica, you've been you know long enough with uh, with Salesforce to to see the transformation. So I was actually uh, wondering, I was curious about the journey, and that's why I asked the question as to if it actually changed the way the community uh, has seen, obviously probably it has, but also the motivation strategies and the, the, the foundation of the motivational work that you're uh, doing with the community members. So maybe, uh, you know, if you have the opportunity to tell us a little bit more uh, as to how things changed since, uh, you know, the community took central stage with all that success. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Um, and I think obviously it's been a 15 year journey since the, the launch of the community. I heard 2006. Um, so before I was probably just coming out of college at that time, <laughs> a little bit past, um, but it, it is kind of, a, it, it is definitely a journey. Um, and yes, to your question, I mean, it definitely has kind of, I want to read your question specifically because there's something that kind of made me laugh, but it was, um, has it now become a community-led company? <laughs> I thought that was fantastic. So I kind of replied with just an anecdotal quote from Brett Taylor, who's our you know president COO, where he says, Salesforce's community is our foundation. It's bigger than us. It's our driving force. Um, and that kind of, it's one of my favorite quotes because I'm just like, I mean, no pressure, but that's a lot <laughs> to say. Um, but our community really does uh, I mean, so passionate about the product. I mean, it does go back to the product ultimately, but there's also this, um, there's been some fan fantastic, you know, just with like the rebrand of Trailblazer and kind of everything that's been going on with Trailhead and just making learning accessible and then kind of feeding back into our community. And then this give back spirit where people want to help those who help, you know, someone help them to get where they are and they want to pay that forward. Um, so it's it's hard to really kind of summarize in a concise answer, um, but I will say it is true. It is part of everything that we do. And as our part of community manager is just making sure that we are aligning with the right teams to get that feedback in the right places at the right times. Um, so whether that's, I mean, largely that's product, like we have a, a team now dedicated um, to just like focusing on aligning with our product organization. So our Salesforce MVPs, for example, these are our product experts and they're really crucial in that conversation because we look at them um, as a resource and they come up with the best ideas, right? Like they're using the tool every day and they really just have those um, use cases just built into their DNA because they've been doing it for so long. And they can really just come into these conversations with product managers with so many, you know, explanations. So like making that connection is so powerful. And I think like we just want to do more and more of that and just continue that feedback loop. And the product is really where it centers around, but it also proliferates every other part of our business, whether it's like getting trailblazers into early access for keynotes so that they can give feedback. Like, did that message hit right? Was it, were we off? Um, we do it on the service side. And when we, when we hear, um, you know, we, we also have the Slack for MVPs. And if we hear something bubbling up and that they're not happy with something, it's like, we're on it. And we're like trying to make the connections to the right people internally. So it's pretty powerful how um, powerful their feedback really is because it does help shape the company. 
Thanks so much. Thank you for this answer, Jessica. Um, so I have a question uh, for both of you, actually. You mentioned mentorship, uh, internal, internal mentor, mentorship between leaders, which is something that uh, we are trying to um, push out in our community. Uh, what can you share? Like, what's the process? How um, thorough was the building of this mentorship process? Or maybe just something much more easier. Well, I can go first if you want, but we are in the process actually of creating the program. So we have discussed the program with a few leaders and um, one of like the senior leaders we have, and they are beyond excited to help out. But we are still structuring it. So perhaps Jessica can, can give a better input on this. Um, but from the feedback we have from both the leaders we currently have and the ones that are joining, they are beyond excited to, to start doing this. But I don't have that much feedback yet to to give. So super excited to hear about this, Jessica. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I feel like we're still kind of new at this too. I mean, it's there's no perfect way to do it. But I think it started in the community. It was community led first. I think people just were doing it naturally, um, finding their their mentors, asking for mentors, um, and then we did launch a mentor. Um, portal, uh, Trailblazer Connect, where people can go and both volunteers as mentors um, and then mentees. So, and then trying to make that match, um, which has been, I think, part of that by, um, you know, it's been, I think, a journey. There's another team now working on it. So I don't feel super close to how like that is going, but it seems like from where I'm sitting that it seems to be a, a great program and, and really well engaged and people are getting a lot out of it. I think mentorship in general is like super positive and I think similar, you know, we find a lot of newbies get a little overwhelmed in our community because it's like, wow, it's exciting. I want to be a part of it. And then they kind of get in there and they might feel overwhelmed or not quite sure how to get started. So I think the mentorship piece is still um, super relevant. And obviously we've invested in kind of creating a program and having a team that runs that. Um, and I, and I'm, I'm glad we're not doing that matching on our end too. I don't know if we could quite manage that. So it's been it's been nice to kind of hand that piece of it off and just having a real program around it and making that more visible and easy for people that really want to find a mentor and just don't know the kind of the right way to approach it. Cause I think it can be quite intimidating to ask. I, I'm not good at that either. Like I never feel right going to someone and be like, will you be my mentor? That's awkward. So how do you make that a little bit easier and um, help make those connections? But I think there's a, there's a personal step to that. You can't quite automate it. You know, there's always gonna be like a personal component of like those intangibles. I don't think you can quite get there. Yes, I agree, and I will follow back with you in a few months to see how it is, how uh, how it's yeah. going. And I can maybe so, connect uh, internally with who's running that program too. So mm -hmm. I would love to. Uh, I would love to, and we'll share it if, if it will be relevant for more. And we will bring the uh, insights here uh, during one of the uh, next meetups. Yeah, do you want to ask you a question as the closure for this um, event today? Sure, happy to as I navigate all my many tabs. Um, so let's put you on the spot about the future. Um, like, so we're all really just curious, like, you know, you've all done such amazing things to this point, but what is like the one big project that's gonna consume you for the next six months? Like, what are you tackling right now? Katarina, do you wanna go first? Oh, on our yeah. side is our OutSystems Developer Conference, for sure. So it's something we did um, in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. And for during two years, three years, two years, uh, we, we could not do it. And we kept getting asked, when are you bringing back ODC? We want to go to OSDC. It was awesome. When are you bringing it back? And this year, we finally are. So for sure, that would be one of the things we'll be mostly focused on the community team. Love it. Now, let me say like, it was a in-person conference where I got to meet other leaders that got me in this whole path like 15 years ago. Like nothing is more exciting than to meet the super nerds who love the work more as much as you do. Um, and then for me, like, uh, 
I think just navigating this person virtual hybrid scenario, everybody's talking about hybrid events now and kind of how do we both learn from doing and then kind of sharing those best practices into our community. And we're, we're definitely focused on Dreamforce um, upcoming, which is kind of going to be taking that model on. So I'm sure we'll learn a lot in that process. Um, and then we're really focusing on our online community too. That is, since we just rolled that out, we're kind of in that, like we just are in that post GA, like gathering feedback and doing the fast fixes, bug fixes. And now we're going to be looking at roadmap and a lot of um, that just improving upon where we are at with the, the GA launch. So I think that's definitely going to be consuming a lot of our time. And um, specifically to community groups, we're looking because every community group that we have that has a chapter, um, they also have a collaboration group on the online community. So how are we bringing that experience together, making it more streamlined, um, making sure it's also integrated and that they have the same login experience across and all of those little details that we hear so often, like, please fix this yesterday. Um, just trying to get those things tackled and, you know, um, I'm sure there's much more, but that's what comes to mind. Well, I'm going to uh, pay a lot of attention and let you do all the hard work first, and then I'll be the fast follower, because <laughs> I right now I'm just saying hybrid event, and I don't know what it means. So uh, let yeah. you figure it out first, and then I'm going to go and steal all your best ideas. So thank you for that. Uh, yes. Tally, back yeah. to you. Thank you. Okay, yeah, great. I think. Great job, everyone. This is my favorite CMX event so far. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, well, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, by the way, I think that uh, the CMX Summit is also going to be kind of a hybrid, which is, I'm very glad because we need experience of others to learn from. Um, so I'm very excited about that. Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, let's take a last, one last sh shot of a screenshot. <laughs> uh, you can say hi. And I will do that. Thank you. Uh, it was great seeing you. I invite you to join us uh, also in the next event. You can join the group, the chapter, to make sure you get updates. Thank you very much, Jessica, Katerina, uh, Eli, Iker, Jessica, Falkner, uh, Vera, and Katerine. Thank you, guys. We will share the recording on the event page of, like in, in a few days, or maybe Eli will just like like lighting doing that very I very guess fast. that's my work. Okay, I'll take that off. <laughs> yeah, I was I was gonna ask what's the next topic for the chapter program event? Good question. We we that's have a, a really roadmap. good question. We have Do a you have a great idea? Hybrid events. <laughs> <laughs> Hybrid events seems like one. Um, I would love to learn about that and also making friends with legal when it comes to you know making sure you get the buy-in. That's something and I'm also thinking of all these questions because I am revamping our current chapter program here at my new company. So oh, an eager that's, learner. That's yeah. Yeah. And happy I to mean, present maybe in the future. Just um, hasn't me, been revamped. Me and my legal yet. boyfriends are doing really well. Um, I'd love to, to like be part of that conversation. <laughs> They're our best friends. <laughs> um, are you part of the um, chapter program channel on CMX Slack? Yes. Yes, I am. Yes. Okay. So, so, so like we can follow up there uh, with topics like um, you can suggest topics for for our meetups. It will be fantastic. And also we're looking for somebody to join like the our team to be more the online aspect because me and Eli are stuck at that. Um, so just to keep uh, the conversation going on the on the channel. And uh, Katerina, by the way, this is a topic based meetup of CMX which is, I think, very successful and made me an opportunity to do this type of event because I, were, I, I had to create a chapter for my local. It's not something that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are at Elementor. We also started to run topic-based events, and I think it's going to be a big success with some challenges, but a big success. Yeah. Um, so thank you. I will take from this chat the ideas that Eli just wrote that Katerine uh, offered. Thank you very much. Have a great day or evening. Um, and we will uh, follow up on uh, on Slack. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.